Hi, I'm Natalie and this is James and welcome aboard our floating home Zephyr. Over the past five years, we've been on an incredible journey sailing around the world, accompanied by our two trusty dog crew members, Flint and Kira. Join us every Friday for a new video documenting our adventures. Don't forget to subscribe and be part of the journey. Well, Bahamas in the summertime, it's happening. We got a massive storm rolling through. And uh, we're, we're actually invited over to a friend's place. We're just having a few snacks. And all of a sudden, this thing just came roaring through. And we quickly rushed back because we didn't want to leave the doggos on their own in this. It's calmed down quite a bit. This has actually calmed down. It was honking. Absolutely honking. We came back in the dinghy. Couldn't even see anything, but we got back safely. Everybody seems to be holding pretty well. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the rain makes it seem worse than what it really is. I think we're down to about 25 knots of wind, which is fine. You know, we've had that lots of times. And in the sun, it's fine, but when it's raining like this, jeez. Yeah, check it out. Woo. You can even see the sun <laughs> slightly. But yeah, holy Moses. That was pretty hectic. What are we up? <laughs> you can hear all that thunder. Yeah, we're at 20 knots now. No, no, Flinty. You gotta stay down there, buddy. Go inside. 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 The doggos always want to come out when it's uh, <laughs> the worst conditions. Well, there you go. She's coming in for a second run here. Let's have a look. I'm starting to get the shakes. It's so cold out here. It's just been a rotten couple of days, but uh, the hook is dug. We got a uh, hundred feet out. And we're only in about six feet of water, so and the whole thing's spectacular. We're not going anywhere. I see a couple of boats, but you probably can't see this. There's one out there with the chip, kind of starting to flap. That's not good. We actually saw one in the marina. They had the Mediterranean Triangle and it started started to unfurl. But I think uh, it's been furled back in, fortunately, before it got worse. Oh, dog toy. Stepping on me. <laughs> Good thing is, this wind has blown all the heat away. It's been so gross and hot. 29. It's just so black and ominous over here. That's the cover for the sharp water. Don't want that to blow away. Still high 20s. Shameless plug, but I'm glad I got one of these in the water right now because we are holding good. Probably our first real, real test on the anchor. Ridiculous storm like this. She's doing good. I think I'm gonna go inside because I can't stop shaking. And we're not gonna go anywhere. All right. Nat? Yeah. Oh. Sorry, buddy, you gotta stay inside. You coming in? Yeah, that's it. We're all good. Okay. Boat's holding, everybody's holding, so yeah. it's pretty crazy, hey? Yeah. It is <laughs> mental. Will and Nat are seeing 40 knots at the other marina. At ABR? Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, you got 
a towel to step on and then this towel is pretty much dry. So. It's starting to shake. Good morning and welcome to another beautiful day in the Bahamas. Every morning we've been waking up watching the news. Somebody from the last video put me on to Mr. Weatherman on YouTube. He is excellent. Thank you so much for that recommendation. I have been watching him now every day and I love how he kind of explains everything in layman's terms and really is straight to the point. There's no waffle. I have to do laundry, which I'm going to take you with me for that. And today we get our new high pressure pump for our water maker. We've been without a water maker now for uh, the better part of three weeks. And we've had to be keep going into the marina and getting water, which is totally unlike us. We are going to try and install this water maker pressure pump today and get that done so that we can test it out, see if it works, and we're all good for water again. Um, so yeah, I'm getting everything ready for laundry. So join me for that fun part. Bobby. Hi, I can say hi now. Oh, she gets Jojo. Who's biting you? Hi, baby. Okay, I gotta get these things. Hot, isn't it, Bubba? At least there's a bit of a breeze today. All right, so I've kept pretty busy this afternoon. I got back, hung everything out. Everything's still drying out there, as you can see. I've got a ton of stuff. But what did get dry really fast are the dog beds. Now, the mem this has got to last us another month and a half out here before we can get to the States and get new beds. And what's happened is these have ripped apart and I can't find one that would fit on there, uh, a zipper that would fit on there and I don't have any type of sewing skills so what I had on board were these stick-on velcro as you can see there so I've just fixed this because these were dry so I fixed this and then what's also happening in here is this has got the memory foam inside here but as you can see it's super 
um, thin and what's happened is there's a couple holes now from the dogs and it's all coming out so we needed something a fixed fast that was going to stop that from happening and last till we got down to the US not up to the US anyway so that's now working and keeping that closed and this one's actually better the other one because I had more um, velcro for this one so it's completely closed up and that's my velcro there it probably won't last the next time I wash it but <laughs> um, it's gonna be good for them now and they smell amazing they're nice and clean so they got these for tonight which is great okay I'm still waiting for everything to dry out outside James it has been away all day today trying to get a hold of the high pressure pump and everything that's arriving so um, he should be coming back now and we'll either install it tonight or we'll wait till tomorrow so we'll see all right then that's it these bubbers are out it is so hot on the boat I do feel for them where's Lulu's she likes it under there yeah poor guys it's so hot at least it's nice and windy today though okay all right James has just gotten back with the parts for the water maker that we have been needing but he isn't going to install it today because there's other priorities so stay tuned for next week's video we will be installing it then and we do get it done but unfortunately this week there's some other things that have creeped up which is very normal on a boat but we just wish that it wasn't this so we've been noticing for the last week or so that the coolant has been leaking more than normal so normally we would only have a little bit and sometimes we wouldn't have any leak at all but lately every time we do any sort of trip with the motor on we notice a ton of coolant. So James has decided, especially with the timing of Hurricane Beryl going through and unfortunately destroying St. Vincent and the Grenadines, it's kind of hit home a little bit more that we need to this, make this our priority. So he is now about to service the engine because that's kind of gone up in our priority and figure out what this issue with the coolant is and get all of that figured out before we do anything else here. So I just thought I'd take the time right now, go through a couple of things. Um, one of the things I'm doing is this is the strainer for our engine, um, the raw water strainer. Ooh. Yeah, you get a few things like, so there's a lot of eelweed or uh, seagrass here in the Bahamas. It gets sucked up. So just give it a clean out. Um, I've just topped up the coolant in the reservoir and then next I'm gonna check the oil on the engine um, just to make sure we're all good and just okay. check the engine over in general. And I don't know what the doggies are doing. Oh, look, there they are. <laughs> They're watching, they watching. So the strainer goes back in nice and clean. Next, it's time to check the oil levels. They're a little low, so we add some oil and then we discover this on our starter battery. So when in doubt, call your dad. <laughs> so I just called dad and he told me, us, that the buildup on the negative plate of a lead acid battery is known as sulfation. So this is when lead sulfate crystals form on those battery plates. And this can happen when a battery is left discharged for too long or is not maintained properly. This can in turn reduce the battery's capacity. So anyway, dad's advice is to take it all apart, clean it, and then put it back together, make sure the connection's really good this time, and then put a ton of Vaseline on both. So that's what we're going to do now. We grab some sandpaper and clean the connectors as well as the battery plate. Then we put it all back together and add some dielectric grease. Anyway, I have made coconut rice, which is done. And I don't know, who's that there? Smelly, smelly boo. It's Lou. Where is she? 
Did she come? Oh, now they both coming. Now they both coming for some coconut rice. And now there's only one thing left to do. Test the starter battery. Ready? Yep. It's been a long, long day. I think we're both tired now. It didn't start as great as what we thought. We need to check the voltage. Anyway, with that, we are going to have a coconut rice with some chicken, have dinner, and then relax. Say night, guys. Good night. All right, guys, so I've finished my service. I've topped up the coolant. Um, I've gotten changed because it's super hot and sweaty, um, but I've done a little bit more diagnosing here trying to work out what our coolant leak is. I've been trying to figure it out for years, but it's been so hard to figure out, but I now know what it is. Um, so essentially our water pump here that sits in behind this pulley, um, it's got a slight crack and leak in the seal. And so it's been getting slowly worse and worse over the last year and a half. And now it's leaking, but it doesn't mean we can't run. It basically drips a little bit and it just means we have to keep topping up the coolant um, until we order the new pump, the new, the, yeah, the new water pump. Um, it's a ridiculously expensive part. Um, and then with being here in the Bahamas, all the import taxes, it's, yeah, this is going to break the bank, but, um, it's absolutely vital to replace this. It's such a hard working component on this engine. It takes a ton of abuse. Um, it feeds our hot water system and manages the coolant. Like it does so much. Um, so, um, we've gone for the proper Yanmar brand, no Chinese knockoff that, you know, I read a lot of bad reviews about. So that's where we're at. We can still run. We just got to manage our coolant, make sure it's topped up, but we're going to order the new part and get that on the way so that we can solve this problem. If you'd like to be a part of the journey and become a patron, go to the link you see here on the screen. Another way you can support us is by hitting that subscribe button.